On the morning of the 27th of November, 1944, six defendants are led to the courthouse, their hands bound behind their backs. The people of Lublin shout, Child killers! Child killers! Only warning shots fired by the Polish guards prevent a lynching. Thousands of Poles would like to attend the court sessions to watch the trial of four SS guards and officers and two German criminals assistance to the SS, the so-called Kapos. The accused are Hermann Vogel, Anton Ternis, Wilhelm Karl Gerstenmeier, Kapo Edmund Pohlmann, Kapo Karl-Heinz Stalp, SS Corporal Theo Schollen. The defense counsels, those chiefly responsible for the murders in Majdanek were still at large. Odilo Globochnik, chief of the SS, and the commandants, Karl Otto Koch. Martin Weiss. Max Kerger. Arthur Lieberhenschel. and Anton Tumann, the butcher of Madanek. They were later put on trial and executed. The two public prosecutors and the presiding judge who opens the trial. The indictment. The court convened on September 12, 1944, on the basis of paragraph one of the criminal code and article six of the decree of the Polish Committee for National Liberation and considers itself authorized to conduct the trial of Hermann Vogel, Wilhelm Gerstenmeier, Anton Ternis, and Theodor Schellen. The charge against SS Corporal Hermann Vogel is beating and maltreatment of prisoners and prisoners of war. SS platoon leader Wilhelm Karl Gerstenmeier abused women and prisoners of war in particular. Waffen SS Company Commander Anton Ternis brutally maltreated civilians and prisoners of war in the time from January 20th, 1943 to July 23rd, 1944. Anton Ternis and Hermann Vogel consider themselves wrongfully accused. Hermann Vogel testifies. It was my job to take the dirty laundry into town to the Lavinsky cleaners to have it cleaned there and then bring it back to the camp. Kapo Karl-Heinz Staub testifies. Around six Secret Service men from Lublin uh, brought another woman down. They asked this woman to get out. The woman was wearing a black fur coat and black boots. Oberscharfuhrer Moosfeld, the co commandant of the crematorium, told the woman to undress immediately. The women didn't obey. She, they resisted. She went up to the commandant of the crematorium and scratched his face and defended herself. And then the commandant told her that if she didn't undress immediately, he would beat her and would get the whip. And that if she continued to be insolent and scream so loudly, he would shove her into the oven. The woman went on screaming and wouldn't be quiet. So then the commandant sent Boris and Ivan away and grabbed the woman so that she couldn't resist anymore. And then he put her on the slide in front of the oven. I, I could still see that. The slide was at the corner. And I thought to myself, that can't be true, that the commandant would shove the woman into the oven alive. I was very curious. I put my head, I saw it clearly. Suddenly, I heard only a scream. The door was shut. Some smoke came out because the temperature in the oven was very high so that her hair was burnt first and, and, and so forth. And all you could hear was a scream and, and then it was all over. On November 3rd, 1943, 18,400 Jews from the Lublin district were shot and burned within 24 hours at Madanik in the operation codenamed Thanksgiving Day. Heinz Staub was an eyewitness to the shootings. Later, on November 3rd, 
It was an operation in which around 18,000 Jews were shot in a large open area near the crematorium. Four big loudspeakers had been set up and played music records, waltzes, popular music, various songs, and you could also see how naked Jews came out of a barracks, men, women, children, all together, about 50 of each. And they ran to an open ditch. A few days earlier, four big ditches had been dug, 30 meters long, four meters deep, and three meters wide. And these prisoners, these Jews, had to stand naked at the edge of the ditch and were shot from behind with two machine guns. The Polish witnesses are sworn in. I swear to God, the all-powerful and all-knowing, that I will tell nothing but the truth and will not conceal anything known to me, so help me God. Dolomin, a Jewish woman who survived Madanek. Young, healthy women who were fit for work were separated from the children, but the mothers did not want to leave the children. That was a terrible moment I'll never forget. There were a few mothers who simply wouldn't go. They, they stayed with the children. That meant their death sentence. There were mothers with small children. They were three- and four-year-old children who still clung to their mother's skirts. And the children who were still being carried were torn from their mother's arms by SS women. Germans who were there took them as though they were bundles of clothes. The public prosecutor asked First Lieutenant Tadeusz Butzin what methods of killing were used in Madanek? Butsin lists them. Beating, hanging, shooting, drowning, gassing, starvation, and lethal injections of Evipan and phenol. The two public prosecutors sum up. At least 500,000 Germans, bookkeepers, financiers, cashiers, camp directors, postmen, railroad workers, telegraphists, telephone operators. They were all harnessed to the monolithic machinery of extermination. You know what the scale of this was? You know that those 500,000 people were occupied with only one thought, the thought of eliminating others? If there were no other proof of the fascist crimes in Poland, large parts of Soviet Russia and other countries in Europe, if Auschwitz and the elimination of the ghettos in Bielostok, Lodz, Warsaw hadn't been there, if there had not been mass executions in all Polish cities, villages and settlements, the existence of the extermination camp at Madanek alone would serve as evidence to indict not only these five, but the entire German people. They killed men, they killed elderly people, they killed women and children. They killed Soviet prisoners of war and people of various nationalities, not only Slav. The engineers who built the crematoriums were in the service of German lawlessness. In the name of peace and happiness purchased with the blood of millions of victims, I demand the death penalty for them all. The presiding judge reads out the verdict. All of the accused are sentenced to death by hanging. This punishment is directed at the entire German people, not only at those who stood in the dock at the Lublin trial. More will come after them. The absent Governor General Frank, Gauleiter Greiser, Camp Director Tumann, and dozens of other fascist criminals who are waiting for their turn to appear before the Polish tribunal. Some are still in hiding. On the 3rd of December, 1944, five of the convicted are publicly hanged next to the crematorium. This was the first Madanek trial. Thousands of SS guards and capos served in Majdanek. Only 107 were put on trial by the Polish and eight 
by the Allied courts. One generation later, the second Majdanek trial, 1975, took place in Dusseldorf. It took six years to pass sentences on eight SS guards, men and women. All the documents which you have seen were filmed July to December 1944.